Hi, my name is Gudrun from GE Designs. Welcome to my live quilting chat, Tipsy Tuesday. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our show on this Tuesday evening. Uh, thank you for being with us. I know uh, you've got lots going on this time of year, so thanks for being here. Whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, hit that like button or subscribe if you're there and uh, I think we all need to send out some extra hearts. We are sending extra love to Texas and to New York and um, with recent events of today, horrifying event events, I just wanted to acknowledge and just uh, my heart is really heavy so I thought I would wear my kindness shirt and I think we can do so much better. So hopefully, hopefully these things are not gonna take place in this country at the rate that they are right now. So, moving on everybody. Let's get happy, let's talk about fabric and quilting. On today's show, I want to show you a little bit of a trick when I am doing spinning seams on really small blocks. I have a little time-saving trick for you. I have shown you before how to spin seams on, on blocks, four patches, hourglass blocks, things like that. And so I wanted to show you a little time-saving trick that I use when I'm working with little little tiny pieces. So we also uh, have some great new fabrics in the store and I have a little surprise, a little announcement, a little save the date announcement towards the end of the show. So stick around, stick around everybody. But there's another reason to stick around. We have a giveaway at the end of every show. One winner is is um, chosen randomly from all of your comments so keep commenting throughout the show and then we have a giveaway question at the end you get a chance to win a second time $25 gift cards are of course up for grabs every show two of them and even if you're not watching us live you can still enter the giveaway by answering the given the giveaway question so our last week's question I asked you do you sew more or less in the summer so that was really interesting to watch the answers and I think it really depends on where you live and how the summers are people that are off for the summer so more in the summer hotter climate so more in the summer some of you um, so year-round equal amounts and I love that I love that and I probably do maybe a little bit less than the summer living here in Minnesota we try to enjoy the outside a little bit more but um, our winner from this this giveaway question is Judy Ann Yelton. So congratulations, Judy Ann. Um, she says, yes, I probably sew less in the summer because we're traveling and socializing more. Understandable, but you have won yourself a $25 gift card. To claim it, just email us help at gequiltdesigns.com and we will get that to you right away. All right, let's talk about quilts. Let's talk about quilts. The one behind me have a brand new tailor. I've been telling you we're on a tailor kick. We love a bundle and it's an easy fast quilt to make up and it really features the fabrics and just shows off beautifully. This one is made with our deep blue sea bundle and um, the quilting pattern on it is amazing. As you can see, it is a McTavishing medium. Of course, one of Karen McTavish's designs oh, I love it so great texture on it it just resembles the ocean and here is our bundle the deep blue sea beautiful blues turquoise aqua and then we have just a little bit of that coral uh, color in there deeper tones of burgundy just to make it pop so we added a couple of dark blues in here for a little more sharpness into the quilt and I love the way it turned out really really love it so on the other um, in the corner we have an Haldora pattern this one is from my Quilts of Iceland book and this one we have there is made from Cozy Up which is a bundle 12 piece bundle very few left, but I wanted to show you because we're going to be talking about the spinning seam texture or technique. And so there's a lot of little nine, pa uh, four patches in that quilt. And the leftovers are used for the Dora runner. 
the table runner, which is also in the Isla book. And so it's perfect for you guys if you want to tackle this quilt to check out this technique. But there's the fabrics. I think we, I believe we have just very few bundles left. We paired it with the background. It's a nice creamy background, uh, very nice and warm. It's, it's in the year round quilt, but those colors are really kind of warm as the, as the fall starts to approach. So it's a great one to cozy up with as the cooler temperature starts rolling in. So check that out. Um, the Haltzora quilt on there that you saw on the screen is quilted with a pattern called Oblique, and that's an Urban Elements pattern. Beautiful, beautiful for um, beautiful texture. Nice wavy things. Um, okay, so on the cabinet I talked about that. The Dora runner. So I think I would. Should we just dive into the technique? Say hi to Mr. HP. He's of course here. He's here. Oh, is he? He's here. Say hi to Mr. Is HP. He? Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I've been talking too much. He is here um, and still here. We're getting ready for his big gigs next week, but he's going to be hanging in, uh, in here with us for a little longer. But I wanted to show you this little trick. So I am going to move my ironing mat over here. So first off, maybe some of you haven't ever done a spinning seams on a block and don't know what that means. So what that means is when you have four seams coming together or possibly more than that, you would spin the seams on the back so they kind of go in a circle and then you open up the middle making this a much lesser bulk than if this was pressed over and then you have multiple layers of fabric in the middle and if you're doing a lot of these in a quilt it can be kind of annoying especially if you're quilting it yourself and things like that. So it lays very nice and flat this way. So normally when I'm working with a bigger block, I'm going to grab my iron and it's cold. As you can see, I'm touching it. I'm just doing this as a demonstration. Otherwise, I would never put my wool mat on top of my cutting mat. So I'm just demoing here. So normally if I was doing this, I would uh, start by pressing my fir first two seams. I would press this one this way and turn it and go this way. So go all four sides and then I would flip my block over, open it up and just press the center and give it a good press. So kind of a lot of steps if you're working with little tiny blocks. I mean these are not that tiny but uh, this one is. So this one is just one and a half inch squares. So I first of course press my two sides so they're already going opposite directions and then I lay them together to sew my seam so the two two patches together so now it's become a four patch so here instead of doing the two directions here I just press it to one side especially when I'm doing a lot of them it's just easier to press them to one side then I flip it over and all I have to do is we have three seams going the same way and then one opposite. So these three are going the same direction. This one is opposite. So all I have to do is put my finger down here and just flip that one. So open this up and flip it over and give it a press. So that's so much faster than having to do it from the other side. So again, I've got my two sewn together. I will just press it this way, flip it over, and then just put my finger down, flip that seam over, open it up, and give it a press. So be, it's the same technique when you're working with hourglass blocks. I would just, when they're small like this, press it outwards, and then flip that one side over and give it a press. I always finish with a press from the right side to make sure that they lay, everything lays nice and flat. All right, does that make sense to everybody? Does that make sense? A little time saver there with the tiny little things. And so I wanted to talk about it because, and I wanted to have these quilts on the set because we're doing a lot of these two inch four patches for both the Haldora and then of course the runner. So it really saves a lot of time to spin them that way. All right, let's take some questions if you have any about this love the technique um, yes I've been spinning seams and honestly this 
quick method will not work when you're working with bigger blocks. Then you really want to press the seams all the way out to the edges. So you want to just do it from the front, flip it over, and break that middle, uh, and just press that middle last. So, but it's with those tiny pieces where your fingers are kind of too big for the tiny pieces that this makes it so much easier. Uh, <laughs> Cheryl, good job. She's been doing something smart all along with smaller pieces. That's a great idea. All right, so, okay. Lots of folks uh, trying this. Now, if you haven't done a full on, if this is the first time you're ever seeing uh, spun seams. I do have pressing videos where I do show this on bigger pieces. I've done quilt alongs where I've shown it. So um, check those out because it really to make a difference. Do you have, the f have to feed them through the machine in a certain way? You don't have to, but whenever I can, I do feed mine. If you got lights and darks like I do, uh, I press the first ones to the dark and I feed them through the machine. You can spin them either way you feed them through the machine, but when I can, I always have the dark on top when I'm feeding them through, so my seams are going um, kind of towards my foot, um, my, my foot on my sewing machine. So as I'm sewing this down this way, these nested seams, they kind of get pushed into each other and there's a better way of nesting. If we sew it from this side, sometimes that middle slides a little bit and then you get a little opening when uh, in the middle. So that's usually the reason you get a little opening. So that's just a little extra trick because I'm not a pinner and uh, this way you can avoid pinning. All right, any more questions on this one? Not seeing any. Good. Well, I thought, you know, since the Haldora quilt, well, the book, uh, Quilts of Iceland book has been out for quite a few years, and we've had numerous, I've seen numerous beautiful Haldora quilts, so I actually decided just to go in the crew today and kind of pull in all those Haldora uh, quilts that you posted, and I tried to find as many as, you could, as I could, and I made a little slideshow, um, just a little something to honor what you all been doing. So here are some more amazing Haldora quilts. beautiful quilts and hopefully we'll have more so don't forget to post your quilts everybody if you're in the crew on Facebook Goodrin's Quilt Crew our group make sure you post them um, and when you post a quilt always put the title of the quilt in uh, the text in the in the not in the comments but in the text when you post a photo because when I when we search it then we'll bring them all up so that really helps all right, so um, the Haldora in the book, somebody asked, does the, does the name have a meaning? It's a common, a pretty common female name in Iceland, actually my sister-in-law's name. Um, however, this quilt was named uh, after the inspiration. So let me show you the quilt. Can you put it on the big screen? So you can see this quilt was inspired by uh, one of my multiple visits to the textile museum in, in Iceland. 
And so I always find something to be inspired by. In this case, it was this embroidered chair, or I think it's cross-stitch chair cushion. And I couldn't get it out of my head. I had to draft it into a quilt. And so this was the result. The quilt was the result of seeing this chair. And um, in honor of the museum, since it brings me so much joy to be there and inspiration, I named it after the founder. Um, not the founder, actually the person that donated a lot of her textiles she'd been collecting for, for decades. Um, and she donated it all to the museum. So I named the quilt after her in her honor. So that's where the name comes from. Any other questions on, on the quilt or the technique? Do you see any? All right, great. So uh, I wanted to share some of our pre-orders. We have some new pre-orders up um, uh, in the store. And these are, as you know, pre-orders. This is fabric that is gonna be shipping later. We always have in the description of each pre-order, we have in the description estimated shipping month. And of course, you all know that doesn't always work out, but just know that, that this is not shipping right away. So if you wanna place an order for a pre-order product, make sure you, you um, place that order separately, not with other stuff that's in stock because then that stuff won't ship to you until the pre-order comes in. And if you order multiple pre-orders in the same order, they won't ship until that last one arrives. Does that make sense? Now, the benefit of pre-orders is, of course, you're securing yourself the fabric, sometimes that we sell out pretty fast. Um, you're also kind of planning ahead. I love that, that we can plan ahead and then you get this beautiful package in the mail that you bought months ago. <laughs> it's kind of fun. So. All of our pre-orders, you save some money too. All of, if you place a pre-order, it is discounted from when we, the fabric arrives. So you actually do save um, a little bit of money by placing the order ahead of time. So let's check out these new ones and see what's coming up here real soon. Most of these orders are gonna be shipping August through, I think the last ones are like October. So this first one is called Birdsong. It's by Gingerbur from Moda. I love, love the colorway of this. I, another unique colorway with some corals, some charcoal grays, beautiful ivory, and just a touch of that mustardy yellow color that is so popular today. Uh, love using it these days. Then we have a black and white collection by Ali K Designs. This was very hot, her first collection was very hot. It sold out really fast. So I mixed in this bundle, some white backgrounds, some gray backgrounds, and some black backgrounds. So you get real, um, quite a bit of variety, even though it is all monochromatic, just black and white. And then we have beautiful fall flannels. So this one is going to be yummy for yummy, cuddly flannel quilts. Fall Melody Flannels by Holly Taylor. This is shipping, I believe, in September. So perfect to make some beautiful quilts. And um, I think these are just going to have to be, be uh, for, for the cabin. It's just perfect for the cabin. Then we have a couple of Tula Pink uh, bundles. Her Moon Garden line uh, just came out. I'm sure you, if you're a fan of Tula's, you've seen this. She split the line into two colorways. So we decided to do two bundles. So you'll be able to get all of the fabrics um, that are in the line. So her Dawn colorway is there with kind of the lighter colors and the greens. Um, so this Moon Garden fabric is is kind of a nod to the animals that come out at night so um, the nocturnal ones so there's nocturnal animals and and um, flowers that bloom at night so this is the dawn so those that are a little bit brighter in the dawn and then we have the second one is called dusk so more so the pinks and the greens beautiful beautiful uh, of course her style so I, I feel like there's a lot more she's doing a little bit more prints that are lower volume that are uh, not as busy so it just makes for a beautiful collection then we have another free spirit designer a new one this one is um, called poppy pop 
very mod line, modern, and um, I think it's really cool. I love the colorway, this, the red and the teal and the mustard. It's just really cool, really cool prints. So kind of mid-century modern uh, type style. I love it. And then we have um, another free spirit. This is Touchstones by Shell Rommel. She's been a favorite of ours. Very unique designs, very textural and very soft colors. Unique colors. I feel like this one is one of the stronger ones, uh, like some darker colors in there, a few, um, but very nicely balanced uh, bundle this way. Just a touch of that rust color in there. I love that. Then we have Wild Meadow. This is by Sweetfire Road for Moda. I love this fabric. It's really vibrant. I think it is more vibrant on in person. I've seen it in person than it is on the screen. Um, and in photo and just you know computer images, this one just beautiful violets uh, and the pinks it's paired with that gorgeous mustard color. Or not mustard. It's kind of like caramel like okay maybe Dijon mustard but not mm. yellow mustard <laughs> if we're gonna be specific great poupon yeah <laughs> great poupon <laughs> that is it <laughs> so I love this and I'm already I got a little charm pack ahead of time so I'm making a little something I just could not leave it alone you know it's the best part when you just crack those little charm packs open to see them all but I love the bundle it's a very balance got some directional and all the different colors so it's perfect it's perfect so that's um those are all the new ones we're working on more for to release later um next week or so lots going on lots going on everybody lots going on but uh any questions on any of those pre-orders i know um it might be sometimes confusing place an order for those um jane says it's kind of a taupey mustard you're right it's it's more taupey than it is I don't know. It's like a curry color almost, like a curry yellow. <laughs> so spicy mustard. All right. Um, Connie's asking, is Haldor a family name? It's not. So it's a first name. Uh, so Iceland is very first name based country. So our last names, we still have a patronymic system. So m like my real last name, if you haven't noticed, is Gisladotir. So that means you take your father's first name or your mother's, you can choose. And then you add a daughter behind it or a son. If you're a boy, you add a son. If you uh, are a girl, you add a daughter. Um, if you're a non-binary, you can choose or, or do either. <laughs> That's what's beautiful. Um, so we don't have family names. We don't have family last names. So you have your name that you're born with. It does not change if you get married. Um, families may have different last names. It was very confusing for everybody at my kids' schools <laughs> when we moved here that they didn't have the same last name. Um, but that's just the way we do it. So I, my name is, last name is Gisla Daughter. My brother's last name is Gisla Son. So that's simply how we can explain it. So everything is based on first names in Iceland. The phone book, when we used to have a phone book, it was listed by first names not alphabetically by first names not alphabetically by last names so can we order two pre-orders together yes you can um and and it's, and they just make sure that they have a ship date that's similar um if you're okay with waiting on one then the order will not ship until both of them are in um, but if you're ordering like both bundles of tula pink they obviously will come in together so that's cool that's all good that will um ship together Will you have any Christmas pre-orders coming up? There's a lot of Christmas pre-orders already up. We, we listed a lot of them last month, so check those out. Um, there are some hot, hot um, collections there. And speaking of, I'm showing one that just came in that was a pre-order, and last year it sold out instantly, so we have still have some, and we're getting a little bit more, but um, that's not the first one I'm going to show you, though. That's not the first one. I'm going to start with a bundle that came in. Pre-order as well. One more question. Oh, where did Ertla come from? Uh, Ertla is my middle name. And yes, this is how you pronounce it. Ertla, not Erla. 
although it's okay I don't really mind a lot of people do so I always when I started my pattern company I used GE I used my middle name because I knew Gisla Dothir would be really hard <laughs> to pronounce and understand and uh, remember so um, that's why I always use my first name and my middle name I'm always called that I was always called that in Iceland I was always called my first and middle name um, in school and everything because Gudrun is a really common name in Iceland so they were always used together just to kind of identify me from any other Gudrun <laughs> but it just kind of stuck. Erla is also my grandmother's name so I was named after my grandmother. That. What if there were several people with the same first names? So then you use the last names to, to distinguish which Gudrun. You can use the middle name or the last name to distinguish which Gudruns, which Gudrun you are. So, um, so you can, it's, and people say, how do you know that you're from the same family? How do you know that you're related? Well, honestly, it's harder to figure out, especially females in this country, it's harder to figure out who you're related to because your name changes every time you get married. <laughs> so it's like really hard. When I was in high school in the United States, I, I was in high school with a lot of, I had high school friends and then that was before the internet, you know, <laughs> and uh, Facebook. So then when you're trying to look for people, you have no idea because they all got married and you don't know who they married and you don't know their last name. So there's no way to find people anymore. So it's just interesting. Yes, so um, Jane is asking if the table runner over here is made from the leftovers of Haldora. Yes, it is. So you had like these strip sets left over. So I just told everybody to keep cutting, keep sub cutting them, save all those leftovers if you want to and make this runner. So automatic leftovers and those little four patches are perfect leaders and enders to put together as you're putting the quilt together. So it's like halfway done already when uh, you have the quilt done. So, and the instructions for the runner are in the book as well. All right, let's start this off. Beautiful, beautiful fabric. So I've shown you two quilts from this line already. It's Midnight in the Garden. I actually showed you last week, I showed you the Matrix quilt and um, the June quilt. I made two quilts from this bundle and really love this. So this was a pre-order and your pre-orders already shipped. But here is that main print that really enticed me. Uh, for this line. I love this kind of brownish charcoal color paired with a really nice blushy pink and that um, beautiful curry mustard. <laughs> Great poupon. <laughs> that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be your word of the night. I'm gonna hear a lot of grape poupon I can tell. Yep. So beautiful uh, again the charcoal with a small floral I love this one, um, just a little bit of bees with kind of a vi uh, viney action between them, a little bit of that blush pink. And I love this one as well, kind of a garden theme with the animals in that charcoal. And another low volume in that charcoal, just little branches, beautiful. Then we go into this print with the apples, the golden apples and the blush pink apples. Um, we have a light pink with leaves on it. Then we have that same print as before in that blush pink and I love the different shades of pink here. And then we have that same main print in that uh, pink that was here. And then we go into the curry colors, the low volume, we have the animals, and the small floral. So this is, this is 12 pieces, so this is um, the, the bundle. So we have a couple of prints in one yards and three yards. We have the main charcoal print floral, large floral, and then we have um, a light background with the really cool mustard roses and charcoal leaves. I really love this one. So we have it both in one yards and three yards. So beautiful, beautiful. So if you want big borders, backings, things like that. So I did a poll with this one and I started here on the charcoal side because it kind of goes from like a brownish charcoal into a black. 
So I did a shade difference. So the black, I did the Bumbleberries Basic Black because it has some shades of gray in here. I did the Dash Blow in the Phantom, has gray specks in it, and then the Thatched in the Shadow, that charcoal, great charcoal gray. For the Blush Pinks, the lightest tone, I did a Deco Stitch Peach Whisper, and then um, a Medium, the Moonscape in the Coral, and then the Sugar Basic uh, in the Peach Fizz. Beautiful, lovely pinks to add in here. And then for our favorite color of the night, I did um, a little bit darker with a sugar in the cactus, floor elements and the honey mustard, and then the grunge in the mulled cider color. All beautiful. I did find a couple of stripes. I did the found the diagonal stripe in the black, which would work perfectly with these, or the stripe, the brown from Rhythm and Harmony. So it has that mustardy brown color if you want it um, to add a little, little action, a little movement with stripe in that color. So as far as a background, I guess I didn't pull them or didn't bring them, but I would go with, if you wanted to use a light background, I would go with something totally ivory, um, matching this one because we have that speckled throughout here. And uh, what I used for the June quilt was one of the modern backgrounds. It has a little light gray in it, which toned really nicely with these guys. And so that worked really well to kind of bring it all together and, and create a great contrast. So this is Moonlight. Midnight. No, Midnight. Sorry, not Moonlight. Midnight Garden. Midnight in the Garden is called. Yeah, we need some more um, innovative fabric line names. Can we please? <laughs> Uh, we were just laughing that there's so many lines that are just named the same over and over. Like I, I, one of our pre-orders was Songbird or Bird Song. I've had so many that are called that. <laughs> and, um, yeah, we need some innovation, people. All right, so this next one is a Halloween. Yay, Halloween line. This one is called Mystery Manor, and it is by Andover. So here it is. Let me turn this around because this there's got to be actual um, in the mirror. It's got to be right side up. So this line is purples, oranges, and grays. Love this classic Halloween combination. The black cats and the crows. And then we have more purple, some spiders with just a touch of orange. Um, I love this one. It's kind of patterned bats on this beautiful background. And then we have a little typography print that says potions, treat, midnight, haunted, spooky, with a little bit of, of um, spider web in there. Then uh, we go into the orange colorway. So we have that same mirror print in the orange. We have a collage print here that's really cute. Pumpkin carving party potion. I love this because it's not just one direction. It is up and down, which is great. So it's not just one direction. It's two directions. That's not quite tossed, but it's better than one direction. Then we have the spiders on the orange and then the bats, orange bats on the gray background. And then we have the gray colorway, same print here. We have the collage print in the gray. The spiders. And then the typography print. Really love this shade of gray. So great to mix in some black and gray. I did a pull. We also have one more print um, in one yards and three yards from this line. This is... Uh, I didn't bring this cream color into the bundle. I felt it was really great to keep it in the darker colors because then you could bring in any background and use and make something with high contrast. But this is a print that is a part of it. The Midnight Manor, we have the owls and the crows 
with a little bit of spider web. Um, so we have this in one yard and three yards. So a really cool back for a Halloween quilt. So, or, or Halloween trick or treat bags, anything like that. So this is available in one yards, but I started with a little bit of purple on this side. The spectrostatic and the old amethyst is a perfect match of this really rich purple. And then the sparkles purple, this was from Color Club, works perfectly in here. I love the little black in there. It just works really well with all these other blacks. So as far as the black, um, I did pull in the spe spectacular black with these gray dots in it. It's perfect. And then of course, we have a spider web that is black that works perfectly. Bad to the, it's from bad to the bone. Um, the grays, canvas charcoal is um, kind of on the lighter side, works perfectly with the light ones, and then a little bit darker, the circle burst and the charcoal has the light gray and the dark, uh, almost black. And as far as the oranges, I did two shades, the grunge and the russet orange as my darker, and then the seeds tangerine as the lighter orange for this one and then I pulled two kind of backgrounds that would be great contrast with here uh, because the skulls are a little bit whiter than this creamy color I thought that the spider webs um, bad to the bone in the off-white would be great or the musical notes the aria music notes um, with a little bit of black on it I really love this this print so I think it would kind of have that same rugged feel as the Halloween line does. So this is it, Mystery Manor. Are you ready for Halloween? I'm ready. <laughs> and we are gonna do a Halloween show and a Christmas show just like we did last summer. Uh, once we have all the Halloween lines in, Halloween and fall, uh, we always try and make a little something out of them um, so that you can really see them in action. So we haven't gotten a date for this yet because we want to make sure that everything is in the house before we do it. And we did the same thing with all the Christmas stuff. Speaking of Christmas stuff, Mr. Grinch is in the house. So this bundle is a bigger bundle because I couldn't leave anything out. It's a 14 piece. But before I show you the bundle, how the Grinch stole Christmas, I want to show you two panels. We have two panels that are not in the bundle. They're sold separately. This one is really fun. It is an advent calendar, kind of. So it's this big tree um, that you would cut off and just quilt it. You can put a border on it if you wanted to or just bind it with a really cool stripe or something. And then um, you would put buttons on the tree and then on the other side you have all these ornaments that you would just cut out, put a little loop of uh, ribbon on it or string. So you have a back side and a front side, the countdown. So uh, the kids could flip over the number and reveal what's the photo on the other side. So it's a little, you know, unique one. Does not have to have a gift or a candy, but just the fun of flipping it over and seeing all the, all the little images from Grinch World. So this is one of the panels, the advent. Do we have a photo of it so they can see it all in one? There it is, all in one. Because I couldn't fit it on the screen, it's so big. So it's a full yard. Uh, then we have the other panel, which is blocks. And I love this one. Any Grinch movie lovers, how fun would these little pillows be with all the Grinch faces? And it's just perfect for a kid to fall asleep with their head on Grinch and then they wake up and freak them out a little bit. <laughs> but I love these. They're really cute. So these are both sold separately. Six blocks. They're all different in this one. And then we have the bundle. It's a 14-piece bundle because I could not leave anything out. Kind of, sort of. I left some out, but... So, lots of light um, background prints. So, I'm going to show you all of those first. I made some really cute aprons last year. 
here's the all over. You're all on the naughty list. Is on this sign. And we have the ho 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 with the Grinch faces. I love the different scale. Um, then this print was a real hoot last year. Love this. Um, all the phrases. Let it snow elsewhere. <clears throat> Marry whatever. I microwave fish at work. You're all on my naughty list. Resting Grinch face. Unhappy holidays. <laughs> Feast mode. Yeah, I think this was super fun. We have uh, the stars in all the Grinch colors on a light background, and then, of course, the Grinch stripe. Then we have the colored fabrics. We have, what's the dog's name? Do you remember? Uh, no, you don't. Somebody's going to remember it. Somebody's going to remember it. Um, I don't remember now. I can't think on the fly. So on the red background, we have the Merry Grinchmas. And we have to watch The Grinch every Christmas. It's just kind of a, a must. So then we have all the Grinch. Max. Max, yes. Everybody put the name on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Max. So all the families and Grinch. That's when he's happy and embrace Christmas, I think. Uh, we have another red one, uh, Grinch, Grinch, Grinch. Kind of a little stripe action uh, and then we got the Grinch greens we got the Grinch Merry Grinchmas in the green and then the really bright green lime green print with Max and we have a couple of um, prints with a little light blue in it so this collage one oops kind of a countdown one so We're gonna get muted. Are you playing the song? And then we have this light blue one. Isn't that Cindy Lou Who? Right? And Max? With the ornaments. So this is uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Bundle, lots of lights, uh, lots of color. And so I just had to kind of play with that a little bit. If you wanted to match this white, it's pretty white on white, so I would do the century white um, beach balls or something with color too. I love the star bright stars. It already has all the colors on them. So you could use those. Then I just went with all the colors in here and here. So two greens in the darker greens, the jot dot green, and then the sugar in the broccolini, a little bit lighter green. And then, of course, I had to do Grinch green. So we have the bumbleberries and the golden green and the thatch chartreuse. So that's my version of Grinch green. For the reds, I did spotted Christmas red for the darker hues and the jot dot red for the lighter. Then I added a little bit of light blue for these two prints here. The moonscape in the Capri has this light blue, and then um, the seeds in the sky also has that. And we do have, in one yards, the beautiful Grinch stripe. So if you wanted to add more of that, beautiful for bindings, borders, things like that. Cuffs for um, pillowcases and stuff like that. And of course, the, the panels are sold separately. So how the that's how the Grinch stole Christmas. Are you ready for Christmas? <laughs> no. Time is just flying by. Isn't it crazy? It's um, the May is just almost over. It's wild. I'm Memorial Day weekend Grinch. coming up. If it comes too quick, I'm going to be the Grinch. You're going to be the Grinch if it comes too quick? Yeah. I kind of sometimes like to play the Grinch over <laughs> Christmas time. <laughs> but the Grinch is good. He's just, he's just um, a little misunderstood, <laughs> isn't he? All right, so that's our new fabrics for tonight. Um, so I just want to finish it off. Um, 
with a little announcement. We're having a little event at our warehouse later this summer and I thought we would put out a save the date for those of you that would like to plan ahead and maybe make a little trip down to Chaska, Minnesota. Um, so here it is. Save the date for our first annual tent sale. So lots of great deals on fabric out in the tent. We'll have some indoor shopping too. We'll have food truck music and a quilt show. Quite possibly all the new quilts in the new book. So check it out. Put that August 28th, Saturday before Labor Day weekend. And um, from 10 to 2, just put it on your calendar. If you can make it, we'd love to see you. Love to see you. Book signings, whatever. Lots of fun. We'll have fun. So um, that's it for my show. Any questions on any of those things? Any of the new stuff? Um, everybody's wishing they lived closer. <laughs> understandable. Understandable. Um, asking when the new book is being released. I was told you not to ask that because we don't have an actual date for the release. We're finishing up. Officially, it's in the testing stage right now, all the quilts. So it's exciting. It's getting there. We're getting there. So hopefully by the end of summer, it will be available. But we don't know because of all of the supply chain issues. Paper is one of those things that's very hard to source. So we don't know how long the process will take this time. But next week, we'll keep our, keep our fingers crossed. I will for sure let you know when we have a release date. And as soon as we do, you'll be able to pre-order. So no worries. Okay, so uh, live winner. Have you been good about commenting, everybody? Everybody? Do lots and lots of commenting. Yes. Selwyn Knapp. Great name and congratulations. $25 gift card is yours, Selwyn. So just send an email to help at GE Quilt Designs to claim your gift card and we will get you that get that to you so you can go shopping right 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 away. Now I hope you have something fun planned for the weekend. We will be live on Friday with our show. We're gonna sneak away for a couple days, actually. These next couple of days. Somebody's got a little business to do in the Windy City. So I guess it's going to be rainy. So it's going to be a rainy city. And so I'm going to tag along and find some good restaurants. If it's going to be raining restaurants and possibly <coughs> bars <laughs> for research, for research. Maybe food and bars, Dave. Yes, yes. Maybe a little shopping. Although I don't like shopping, but no. shopping. all right. So I wanted to finish it off with our question. Uh, I'm not about to do it later after I ask the giveaway question. Okay. All right, the giveaway question for this show, which will winner will be announced next week. Um, here's my question: What is the last book that you read? And listening to audiobooks counts, and reading quilting books counts. So all you got to do is put your answer in the comments and you're automatically entered for another $25 gift card. We will announce that next week for our Tipsy Tuesday, May 31st. May 31st. Yes, last day of May. Wow. So um, stay tuned for that show. We will be live this coming Friday. That's May 27th at 3 p.m. I'm going to have a great cocktail for you that's um, easy to whip up in batches for the Memorial Day weekend, for the holiday weekend. I'm sure a lot of you are having people over or some kind of gatherings. Maybe you have a party to go to, so bring a picture, <laughs> right? So that's all for us to tonight. I will see you Friday for Happy Friday. Have a wonderful rest of the week, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>